you guys do? <coughs> How you guys doing today? My name is Matthew Ward. I'm here applying for the strength and conditioning coach job here for the school. Um, I'm a student at California Baptist University. I'm going to go over a strength and conditioning coach program for the baseball program here. What we're going to do is go over a year-long prep program to get players ready for the season, which takes place season, preseason, off-season, into the next season. We'll get started right now. I'm a big person on faith and religion. I like to incorporate my religion into all aspects of my life. I like to incorporate religion into the baseball program here also too. But also I like to base the Christian worldviews that could relate to strength and conditioning, baseball, and so on from there. I'm going to start the, this presentation off today with a verse from the Bible, Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. We are the strongest, our weakest link. We should be able to push each other to become better. What I like doing this is basically the Bible is telling you iron sharpens iron. So one person is as good as the next person next to him. So it takes one person pushing someone else to be better than they were before. So as a team, what we can do here is basically go along and have each other push each other and the next player over, the next player become better athletes, better people, better men, and help community or help contribute to the community too as well. Okay, topics we'll be going over today, we're going to discuss the bioenergetics analysis of baseball, the movement analysis, testing and evaluation, and also the year-long program we'll be setting up for your, your school. Okay, first topic we'll go over is bioenergetics analysis. Basically, what baseball is, baseball is a very quick, explosive game. You're relying more on seconds of play at a time. You're going to do quick sprints. You're going to sprint from one destination to the next destination. You rely on quick move, body moves, explosive movements. You're usually relying on, you'll be seeing in the flight position. You're going to go, you're going to re react as quick as you possibly can. And these reactions are done to the body quick and explosively. Basically, the, the basic energy or movements of baseball is the sprint, throwing, and swinging. The first system we'll go over today is the phosphocreatine system. Basis is quick explosive, it's short duration. We'll call this basically our V8 engine of the human body. Basically the V8 engine's very powerful, but it doesn't last very long. <clears throat> basically the phosphocreatine system uses your ATP. It's very quick, only lasts a few seconds, zero to five seconds, but at the same time, it's very strong, very explosive. This is what you'll use mainly in baseball because of the fact that most sec most plays in baseball last a few seconds. The other analysis we'll go over is the anaerobic glycolysis, which is quick, explosive, short duration, just like the phosphocreatine, but it, just, it lasts a little bit longer than the phosphocreatine system. Basically, we'll call this our V6 engine of the human body. Basically, it's a step down from the V8. It's not as explosive, it's not as powerful. It's still quick, explosive though but it lasts a bit longer time. So this is going from 10 seconds to 30 seconds at a time. <laughs> Excuse me. Basically, a baseball, a baseball game is usually about three hours of baseball, two and a half hours, three hours is a regular game. 9% of the movements in baseball is fossil creatine. It's quick, it's short, it's explosive. About maybe 10% of the time, it's gonna be your user glycolysis system, which is usually in, takes to Longer plays, say a player misses a, misses a ball, fielding the ball, and they got to sprint to the fence. That's usually a bit longer play to last for it, and that's where that system's going to kick in and use. All right, next verse I'll start off with is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Basically, all things are possible when you place your faith in God. God will strengthen you and help you perform at your best. I want to have our players realize is place their faith in God and anything they do athletically, what's in the field and life in general, God will push them through it. God will help them out. God will support them and be them, be, be there with them throughout the process. This is a great idea. You put this in your player's head and now this could kick the confidence up, boost their motivation, and basically make it more confident players in the field, knowing that God's with them, God's going to push them, and God won't let them fail. <clears throat>
Okay. Next thing we're going to go over is the movement analysis. Basically, the movements of baseball, they're very complex. They're compound movements. They're very, they use the full body. You're not using basically one limb at a time. You're using your whole body, you're using your legs, you're using your abs, you're using your core, upper body, your mind. So basically, the movements of baseball are very complex. They're very compound because of the multiple joints you're using. <clears throat> the, first compound, the first compound movement we're going to use to discuss is the baseball swing. The baseball swing is a very compound it's a very complex movement. What you have is you have a player that uses his legs here, his core legs here to balance him here. So when he's in the batter's box, he's got core, he's using his glutes, he's using his quads, his hamstrings, he's using his soleus, he's using his abdominals, his obliques to keep him, give him a nice strength core. And what this does is it allows him to his movement when he swings, when he swings, he starts with his legs. Legs are still working, legs are the big part of the whole balance core to it. Then he uses abdominal obliques to rotate pivot, and that's going to be his compound movement for his swing, basically the whole body, the whole, whole movement of the swing, use your whole body, so you basically got to train your athletes to have full body core strength, full body explosive strength, and be able to perform this endurance wise, because they're going to be performing this for a long period of time over the season, they're going to take swing after swing, <clears throat> so basically your athlete's going to need to have strong core, strong legs, and that abdominals go with it. Also, you're going to have the throwing motion. The throwing motion, the baseball throw is similar to the baseball swing. You're using your core balance, you're using your legs, you're having an athletic stance to it. So these athletes need to have a very strong core legs, explosive at the legs, which is going to require, require weight training. <clears throat> but the baseball swing itself is going to last very quick motion again, just like we said with the fossil creatine. Basically, basically, the throw they're going to have here, the same thing, the, the swing, the strides are stepping into it, and then they're using their arm instead to follow through with the ball, which is going to allow them to use their full core, their legs, abdominals, they're actually using the rotator cuff too for this time, and their biceps to control the ball. The other movement we go over is fielding. Basically, you're fielding in baseball, same thing as a swing, you're using your core again, it's kind of repetitive, but the same thing, everything through sports, anything with baseball, strength and training, everything relies on your strong base, strong core, balance through your legs, weight are equally balanced. And they're using the same thing again, they're using the quadriceps, they're using the hamstrings, they're, wearing, they're using the gluteus, and they're using abdominals to stay well. And also, with the baseball fielding motion, they have a strong hip flexor, they go for hip extension, hip flexion to bend the hips, to feel the ground balls. So you're gonna need to strengthen this core, strengthen that part of the body too. That's what we're going to do to this, that the test and evaluate our players and make sure they're physically fit and ready to perform these movements. We're going to go through basic testing and basic evaluation. First, we're going to make sure our physical athletes have a physical through a position first. Basically, we want to make sure they, they ensure the safety of our players, we ensure the safety of the school, the university. We want to make sure they pass the physical through the doctors first to show that they're physically fit, mentally fit to perform the activities. The test that we're going to use to evaluate these players is going to be based on agility, explosiveness, speed, and also core strength. Based same things we're going over earlier with the basic movements. These testing is used to evaluate those movements, see how their, their body will react to it. The first test that we're going to do is the 20 yard shuttle. The 20 yard shuttle is a drill to test agility, to check the ch test change of direction, a player's ability to stop on a dime or as quick as possible, turn, and then pick up speed again without losing too much speed. This translates to your baseball player, this translates to field for fielding and also run the bases. For a fielder in baseball, you're in a stuck in athletic stance, you're stuck in a still standing stance, and you gotta require your players to be able to stop and go in a direction where the ball's going, and also run the bases. You have players on the base pads waiting when to go, but they're at a still position so they got to be able to explode and go to a certain direction. And then also these players, they go touch the bag and then plant in the bag and then rotate across and go sprint to the other bases. Basically, a 20-yard shuttle is done by placing three cones out. You have one cone. You have cones about five yards apart, all three cones out. The player starts in the middle facing, the, facing you. He sprints his right five yards, sprints back to the left ten yards to the cone at the very end and then sprints back right again five yards to finish cone. This is a great way to test their agility, test their, I mean, how quick they can change directions without losing speed. 
and this is going to travel to your baseball field if your, your athletes have to react, read and react if the ball is hit, read and react and go explode and go to a certain direction. The next drill we're going to use is the high jump. <clears throat> the high jump is going to test your explosives of these athletes. Basically, you're going to do is you're going to set up a cone and you're going to set up a measuring tape against the wall and have these athletes jump as high as they possibly can. Basically, this is going to translate for those they're exploding from the athletic position. Basically, you have these athletes here, you have your players, they're going to sit there in a still position most of the game, wait for the ball to get hit to them. <clears throat> so they got whether on the bases when to run. This drill itself here is going to test their ability to explode out of that standing, that athletic stance and go the direction they need to go to. And then testing, more testing we'll do a 30 yard sprint. We're going to set one cone starting line and then about 30 yards downfield we'll set up another cone to the finish line. This is going to test the player's speed. This player's speed in baseball is going to translate to how fast they are on the field. This requires for outfielders, guys who are on the bases, the faster the player, the more chance they'll have to get to the ball and feel the ground ball or make basically save your defense, your pitchers, runs, and points basically for baseball by letting them run down balls that no one else can get to, make the field smaller so people can't, the balls won't land for you. <clears throat> Basically, what we do here, you have the runner start the, fit, the starting line, and then he'll sprint as fast as he possibly can to the 30-yard line. And you want to do it on turf that's relative to the game. So you want your players doing these sprints on grass so you see how fast they are on grass. Not concrete, not wood, but something that's comparable to what you're using. The next one we'll do is rotational power ball throw. Basically, what this is, the players can carry a medicine ball and rotate and throw the ball as hard as they possibly can. <clears throat> this is going to test their core strength. What the core strength translates to is baseball hitting, baseball throwing, baseball fielding. Your, your movements and outlet, once you go back to this baseball swing, baseball swings where you're, you're corking your hair, you're cocking back, and you're rotating, and you're pivoting, exploding through your hips, and using your core strength here to rotate and drive the ball. But also throwing, we discussed throwing, throwing through your legs, and you're rotating with the ball, and you're rotating with your hips. And what that does is the power here allows you to generate more power, more velocity with the ball which you extort more force on the ball. The more force you put in the ball, the faster the ball is going to go to where you want to go. <clears throat> With fielding, your core strength here is going to allow you to bend the hips, rotate, bend over the ball, rotate the throw, and combine it all in one motion. And that's what we'll use the power ball throw to test. The next one is basic, basic game of catch. You have your players line up from one person, one person carrying a glove here, one person with a glove here. If these guys play catch, with this translate or test is as your arm strength. This translates how well your player is going to throw, if he's a pitcher on defense. By doing this test, you can test the arm strength of the player and see where they are arm strength wise. We got to improve them or we got to go from there. Okay, I'll go with another Bible verse. Go to Mark 9 23 and how this relates to the Bible and the Christian worldview on um, baseball. Basically, and Jesus said to him, if you can, all things are possible for one who believes. Basically, what I'm trying to say is trust the program, stay motivated, believe, have faith, stay strong for the program, stay motivated, which means the program might not start the way you want to do, but stay strong, trust the program, have faith, and in the end, the goal, goal is to be a successful team, win victory, have championships, but the person itself has to stay motivated, have to have faith, and stay strong. Now we'll discuss the year-long program part for the pro program, which is well, based in the, micro, the macro cycle, which is a complete year cycle of training. You have your off-season to meso cycle of the, the macro cycle, which is six weeks before spring training camp, starts in January. You have your preseason, which is a micro cycle, four weeks. This begins in March. This is where you have spring training games and your practice scrimmages, and we'll do this to get, get the player ready for season. The next part is a full-win season. It's a meso cycle. It's six months. It's April, September. Baseball is a bit of a grueling, so it's a long grueling season for the players. So this might change the program a little bit here, where you just you spend more time keeping your body healthy and maintaining it for the season. Playoffs is a micro cycle. It's four weeks, October. Use the playoff time to make the playoffs. So you're there to play, and we'll start that now. The off season, basically, our players will rely on recreational activity, recovery time. Since the season we discussed earlier is six months long. 
you want your player to have time to recover, his body's broken down, you want him to recover those muscles, let him rejuvenate, basically recreational activity, go play basketball, go play football if he wants to, anything, basically outside the park, go play some light resistance training too, go to the gym, get some small exercises in, just let his body recover, prepare himself for the, for the upcoming seasons, the long, grueling season again. Basically, we'll start here with some plyometric training, basic movements with a progressive load to it. So we'll do, we'll start with basic lunges, jumps, basic things on two feet to where you can build that strength to them first and then we can build up from there. Then we'll go into our preseason mode, which is the players report to camp at the end of February and preseason lasts about four weeks before the season starts. We'll still continue the same plyometric program, but now we're gonna involve more complex movements. We're gonna do <clears throat> jumping lunges, we're gonna do uh, crossover sets of footwork, we're gonna do more advanced movements based on what we did before and the, uh, the off-season movements. Now here we're also gonna install a, a resistance program here, but we're gonna build on power and strength. When other players become strong, this is our time to actually make the players stronger and more powerful. We're gonna rely here on heavy movements, more compound exercises, we're gonna build a power here doing three sets and from three to five reps as much as we could get them going for our time to build power here because we won't have a chance to in the season once it starts because the season is so much longer than most other sports you have here. Then you have your dynamic, we'll also continue, we'll have a dynamic stretching before workouts, which is stretching while moving, which is a better way to get the muscles prepared for the workouts. It will follow this by a static stretch and also a PNF stretching afterwards to help aid recovery. And now like we said earlier, the in-season mode, it's a very long, grueling season for baseball players. So it's gonna be from last from April, September, about six months of nonstop baseball. At the professional level, they're playing 162 games a year. There's not enough time to build power at this level. But we're still gonna continue to apply metrics, basic footwork, we'll do speed ladders, we'll work ladder work, work footwork, build basic explosiveness, quick feet work. We'll still continue the resistance training for, for, for this program but now it's more maintaining it. We're not building power anymore. We're doing consistent three sets, 10 reps. We're just trying to maintain the body so the body's staying strong for the full season. But we don't want our guys being sore and pushing the bodies too far to where they're breaking down mid-season, they're getting injuries, they're not feeling complete, they're tired, they're worn out. You want them to stay strong all full, for the full season. Once again, we'll still continue the dynamic stretching before games, followed by the stack and PNF stretching. Postseason is one month long October, about four weeks. It's basically not every team makes it, but if you're a team that we hope to make it to playoffs, we hope to win the championship, we expect to play in the postseason. So we're gonna continue the same plyometric training, same complex movements, we're gonna still stick with footwork, make the work to keep their feet at the par, up to group and ready to go. And we're still gonna continue the maintaining strength portion of the weight training program. We want them to stay strong through the postseason still and then keep their bodies up, up to group. Also continue dynamic stretching and static and PNF stretching after games. I'm gonna finish this presentation with another Bible verse I like, Colossians 3, 23 through 24. Whatever you do, work heartily, as for the Lord and not for men. Knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as a reward, you are serving the, serving the Lord Christ. Basically what I like to translate this to is work hard, Strive for greatness, steadfast the Lord, and he will reward you with a victory and a championship. So I want our players to basically place their play on the Lord, give thanks to him, trust him, rely on him, and in the end, he'll be worth the championship. And with that, I'd like to conclude my presentation. Thank you for your time, and let's go out and win.